So here we have a cylinder head that has a threaded dropped exhaust valve. Let's throw a flashlight in here and give you a look. So the one on this side is fine, but the one on this other side is sticking out too far. And it's got a bunch of this black carbon buildup on it. Normally you have polished metal to metal when they go in and that holds it. So the way to get a dropped guide back in, first of all check and see if you've got play. If you've got a bunch of play, don't mess with it. Just take it to the machine shop, get it done right. But if it's a simple dropped valve guide like this one, leave a little bit of carbon on it. You don't want a ton, but just a light coating actually helps hold it in there. So it's supposed to be metal to metal and it'll scrape in there, but that carbon's actually gonna help you uh, keep that where, it's all, where it should be. This vehicle has 90,000 miles on it and valve guides were pulled down because you got all this accumulation on here. Uh, you get all that carbon build up, it sucks them up. So what you do, um, you take an old valve, as I said before, uh, 3 8 drive so you have a big enough hole through it to fit a valve. Quarter inch ones don't tend to fit. You just put it in that way. Uh, you've got your 8 millimeter socket with the bolt side facing to the end of the valve. And then you take your valve guide that you have like this, slide it on. Nice big flat surface so that it doesn't choke it down or tighten it. If you had just a socket, basically the taper on the socket matches to the valve guide pretty dang good. I mean, look at this. What more could you ask for? The problem is, is it's not perfect and it will actually choke it down. So that could be awesome, but it could also be bad. So we take this, drop it in like that, put this in here to help prevent collapse and to guide it perfectly straight and get a good seat on this thing. So why do I have a socket in there? Well, if you don't have a socket, your guide is gonna bind on your valve get stuck. Uh, for one, this is going to stick out too far for two. And three, you know, this has that uh, bevel in it that really tags up well with your valve and gives you that uh, slack, you know, that uh, orbital slack that you need to make sure that you go straight so that everything corrects itself when you hit it. So do this, you get your uh, air hammer. You can ha hammer it with a normal hammer and you're going to bend it up and go all over the place. This creates enough vibration to wiggle it to want to get loose and go. So you just blip it. And hold on to it good, right? Right. So I think I'm just about there looking at it. I can see I went too far. Not terrible, but it's too far. So we'll flip it over and we'll go the other way a little bit. You don't want to work it back and forth much or else you're going to run into trouble. You want to get it right the first time. But you try doing it with a camera on you. It's hard. <laughs> it's not easy. So from here it's a lot easier because you can see how far you are. So now I'm sticking up too far. Um, let's try doing the hammer thing. Don't do it. Don't be tempted. Control freak. I've never gone too far before. Normally the carbon holds you back. Um, but you just, same setup on this side. Uh, get your thing all set up. See how far you're supposed to be. And I gotta angle it. Throws your measurement off, but it'll be the same on both of them. So I'm looking to have 0.65. So I'll tighten that down. Measure this one. And I'll see, I'm just, you know, by the skin of my chinny chin chin, too high. So I'm just going to blip it. And check it. If your valve guides are bad or have any play, it's best to just take it to the machine shop. It's best to just take it to the machine shop anyway. But, if that's not an option because there's a holiday and a bunch of delay and your shop's all backed up, then here you go. Here's your solution. That one went kind of far. Maybe not far enough. That's about perfect. All right, so let's look at it on the other side. See how we're doing. I like looking just through the hole. It's hard to show on camera, but man, all that's perfect. So what I see is a winner. I mean, it's just right in there where it's supposed to be. So the two that were not disturbed, that were totally fine, look like this. See just a little bevel sticking out. 
And then the two that were trashed, or the one that was trashed, was the one on the left. And it's pretty good. It might go down just a little bit more, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave it. If you move them around too much, they loosen up, and then you just never hear the end of it. It's like telling your wife she's fat. Don't do it. So you've got all these valves that seat well that were totally fine. Um, how do you get all the carbon off of them so they don't pull your valve guides down again? Here's the way I do it. I use a wire wheel. You guys subscribe to Matt on Gleason Jeep. I did a little five garage tip video and talked about the value of having a wire wheel. You don't want to make a mess into it. You just want to clean it up. You just want to get the carbon off. So just keep it moving. I'm spinning it and then I'm also working it back and forth. Get down to the trumpet. So this helps with air movement more than anything. You ever had a booger in your nose that slows the airflow down even though it's a real little booger? Basically that's what this does if it's not slippery. So you got them out. Might as well clean them up. You saw how bad that was before. It looked like this, and now it looks like that. Pretty good. You don't see a lot of scratching or anything. There's just the cast look of it. But the main thing we want to get off is this stuff here. This is what pulls down your valve guides. And heat, of course. Can you tell which one had a valve guide pulled down? These are both exhaust valves. They're both E2S's. And yet, you've got uh, you've got witness marks on this one clear up here and they're way down here on the other one so that's what does it